welcome. More of you now. Ooh, we have fans going in. So, welcome to True Hope Community. It is exciting to be together. I'm sounding a little bit off. Something you want me to do? Good? All right, well, let's keep going. God is good, right? And we have talked about revolutionary kind of love that's going to change the world. That is not like what's happening. It's a little crazy out there, just in case you didn't notice, right? We have sung about that God so loved the world. You've invited the Holy Spirit. So I don't know about you, but I'm ready for God to do something. Oh, yeah. Yeah? Are you ready? Yeah. Okay. That sounds go. Okay, let's go. So today's message is uh, entitled, I don't know, it's the wrong, I, I used the wrong color. It says, because he loves me. It's for you too, because you need to say this to yourself because he loves me. It's not just because he loves me, he does, but he loves you and me. And we're all me when we talk to ourselves because he loves me. And we're going to look at Ephesians 3 14 through 19 uh, specifically. Before we jump in, and here are some, some of these stories I'm going to tell today are going to seem awfully familiar to you. <laughs> Anybody ever had their parent or a loved one, or maybe you've done it yourself, but played a game, I love you as much as, I love you to the moon and back? I love you more than all the trees in Washington. I love you more than all the trees in Washington, and that game. You've done it? You've done it? Okay. Um, I had somebody look up what the distance is to the moon. It's apparently like, I forget, uh, 239 thousand miles or something like that, so it's 500,000 in return, but I promise you God's love is still bigger. So when Harrison was eight, he had a bunk bed, and it was about, oh, from the ground to my waist, as much room for me to crawl in there, lay next to him. And we had the conversation, and it started with things like, I love you more than all the leaves on all the trees in the world. So, of course, it becomes a say something back and come up with something more and more. I said, I love you more than all the sand on all the sea, seashore. And I love you more than all the stars in the sky. And then we were relating to God. And we didn't want to say that we loved as much as God loves us, because that would be a little bit bold, right? And we got up to, I love you as much as up to God's eyebrows. <laughs> <laughs> and that's what we used to say. And so... It's the thing we all want to be loved, right? Desperately want to be loved. We do. But we act more with God. Like the game, you know, you've seen it where you have the flower. He loves me. He loves me not. He loves me. He loves me not. And hopefully at the end, it is he loves me, right? You don't want to be the last petal is he loves me not. Oops. <laughs> That's kind of a bad thing. And so I want to talk about what is God say about it. Right? It doesn't matter what I say about it, but what does God say about it? So anyone here discouraged? Okay, we've got one honest person. Excellent. <laughs> <laughs> How about is anybody doubting? Is anybody doubting God right now? I hear you. How about questioning? What are you blankering up to? Yeah. Right? I mean, sometimes it's confusing. It's confusing on this earth, for sure. Maybe some of you are in trouble. Anybody experiencing trouble in their lives? No? Perfect. Maybe you feel depleted. And, uh, well, good news. We're going to talk about all that and how to really, really fix that. So, Paul in Ephesians, who've been journeying there, we're getting now to finally the prayer last week. We, he, he started in on it and then said, hang on. And then he went about talking about all this other stuff. But now he's back and he says, when I think of all this, well, let's talk about what he actually was thinking about. He was talking about how crazy it is that the God of the universe didn't just choose the chosen people, that he chose all people and that they're all welcome. So if you feel like the odd one out, or you don't belong, or you never feel like 
to belong anywhere? You belong because God chose you also. And he says, so he is saying for that reason that God incorporated not just Jewish people in his family, but all people who believe in Jesus, he thinks that's just crazy. So when I think of all this, I fall, I'm trying to find a better place. When I fall to my knees and pray to the Father, the creator of everything in heaven and on earth, I pray that from his glorious, unlimited resources, he will empower you with inner strength through the Spirit. Then Christ will make his home in your hearts as you trust in him. Your roots will grow down into God's love and keep you strong. And may you have the power to understand, as all God's people should, how wide, how long, how high, and how deep his love is. May you experience the love of Christ, though it is too great to understand fully. Then you will be made complete with all the fullness of life and power that comes from God. That's what he's praying. One of the things that I wanted us to think about is how do we pray for ourselves? Lord, protect me as I cry, Lord, <laughs> help me to sleep, Lord, you know. I mean, and those are genuinely good prayers. But this is a deeper version of it, isn't it? To ask for all that God has for us. To be strengthened. And the word strengthened there is the opposite of discouragement. He asks for three things in this prayer. That we would be strengthened, that we would be enlightened. Oh, there's a lot of people who go to a lot of places to be enlightened. And I promise you, people who will try to find it in the palm of a hand, they're not going to find it there, right? Only the God of the universe can enlighten us. And to be filled. So if you're discouraged, He wants to strengthen you. If you are doubting or confused or questioning how good God is, He wants to enlighten you. And if you're depleted and empty, and you're like, I, I just can't go anymore, he wants to fill you. That's our God. That's our God. So what is he saying? He wants to strengthen us. How does that happen? Some of us have come from maybe experimenting with some other substances besides food and um, try to find strength that way, right? There's some drugs that make you feel really that the strengthening God's after? Does it last? No. It says here, I pray that from his glorious, unlimited resources, so it's God's treasure trove. Remember that? Does anybody remember what Ephesians 1, 3 says? Yeah. We have been blessed with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly in Christ Jesus. Why do I keep reminding you? Because we live as poppers. We live as orphans. We live as if it's not true. But it is true. So here's this massive, beyond comprehension treasure that God has for us. Out of that, out of those glorious, unlimited resources, he will empower you. He will strengthen you on the inside. Some of us are a little bit older than other people here, and I can promise you, as I am aging, the outside it doesn't stay super strong. Right? It, I'm getting weaker as the time goes on. You? We need some more work. It's available. I'm like, oh, oh, I can't get up. <laughs> but it's not talking about us physically. It's talking about the inner strength. How? Through the Spirit. We sing about the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, you are welcoming. Please, you know, fill up this place and fill the atmosphere. And fill us. He lives in you. If you believe in Jesus, he's in you. And this power is available. He wants to strengthen you. The Holy Spirit is the might of God, and He is the one to encourage us when we're discouraged. Not circumstances. How long does the circumstances around you encourage you? How long does it actually work? Until you have a bad thought, until somebody cuts you off in traffic, until, you know, somebody doesn't answer a text or whatever, right? It is, it is so fleeting, but the Holy Spirit is in you forever. And the Holy Spirit's power is the same power that raised Jesus from the dead. I think it has pretty big power. That power, God wants to use to strengthen you. That's what Paul is praying. So if you're discouraged, how about we pray this, that God would strengthen us uh, with might through His Spirit. Lord, strengthen me. My pain is too much. My 
circumstances are too much. I can't stay them in you. Please strengthen me with your power through the Spirit. Well, maybe you're confused. Maybe you're doubting. Maybe you're questioning. Maybe you're in trouble. Maybe the world is confusing. If you don't think the world's confusing, I don't know where you live. But, you know, whatever. The next part is that he wants to enlighten us. So that, you know, like I, I, he prayed so that we will be strengthened. Now he prays so that Jesus may dwell in our hearts, may live in us. And it's permanent residence. It's not just a stopover with a, with a two-day backpack. It is permanent residence and total possession. Now here's my question to you as part of this journey. How much of you does Jesus have? However much he has, that's how effective this is all going to be. If he only gets to live in the front room and in the garage of your life, then there's going to be spaces where you're desperately um, pretty, lonely, troubled. But if he has all the rooms, including the messy closets in your life, the attic, the basement, now we're going to go do something. Now we can get to work. So he is, Paul prays that, we, that Christ will make his home in our hearts as we trust him. So here's how that works. When you first say yes to Jesus, all of Jesus is still available to you, and all of the Holy Spirit is still available to you, but your comprehension of it is about so big. And so your experience of Jesus is very small. So how do we fix that? We need to keep taking steps forward in our knowledge and relationship with him. We also need to pray for that. I, I used to pray daily and help me to grow in my knowledge and relationship with you. I would pray that for other people. And how do we do that? Well, you're gathering here. That's a good step. You have to be in the Word. That's God's Word. You have to, we have to pray because that's our communication with God. And then you have to say yes to God and do what He has invited you to do. Here's the truth, okay? Some of you may be stuck. Anybody stuck? You don't have to raise your hand, but if you're stuck, think about that. Ponder that for a minute. Hold that thought. Now ask yourself. If you ask God for something, has God asked you to do something and you haven't done it? Huh. Whoa. Stuck and no obedience kind of go together. Because God won't do the next thing until you do the things that He's shown you. But here's how that goes. We keep praying, Lord, please show me what to do. Well, he's already shown you. Well, I don't want that one. So please show me what to do. Crickets. Why is it? Why is it quiet? But we keep asking what God wants from us. Because we already didn't obey. He already showed us. And we're basically saying, I just saw somebody on a podcast and she said, I gave him my pinky, you know. So, I mean, we're basically giving off our pinky. Um, because we're not doing what he said. We keep saying, please bless me, please help me, please guide me. God's like, please listen. <laughs> I can do that when you do, because it says, may Christ dwell in your hearts through faith. That you being rooted, and he's using a tree metaphor. Psalm 1 says that's when you follow God, you're like a tree planted by streams of water. Who produces that is healthy with green leaves and producing fruit in season, and because it's getting all the healthy nourish, nourishment. And we're, it also says rooted and grounded in love. The other one says your roots will grow into God's love and keep you strong. But the grounded is on a solid foundation. What is that? God's love. You have to be parked on a solid foundation. You have to keep your roots in the ground. That is. You have to keep it in the water, which is the word of God. And here's the thing. If you don't get that God loves you, the Bible is a boring book. Right. Let me say it again. If you don't understand that this is a love letter, that this is God's communication with you, it's just a boring book. It's not it's just a weird book. Right? You start at the beginning, it detours, then it goes to completely other things. It's not chronological. It doesn't have a plot line that's discernible if you don't have the Holy Spirit. So, you have to be rooted and grounded in love so that you may be able to comprehend, so that you can 
understand with everyone who believes in Jesus what is the width and depth and height and length of God's love for us. So um, we have to be convinced because here's the thing, if you are not convinced that God loves you, say you're not convinced that you're doubting. Mm -hmm. Trouble hits. What are you going to do? God doesn't care about me. God isn't there for me. I don't know if this is real. Why bother hanging out with other Christ called Jesus people? They're all equally confused, right? But if you're convinced of God's love and trouble hits, you say, even though this sucks, even though this hurts, even though I'm madder than a hornet, I know that I know that I know that God loves me. And it's going to be okay. Before Harrison, who we were struggling with infertility, and God brought me to a place where he invited me that even if there was at a retreat, and the word was, even if the blank never comes, I will still love you. So think about that for all of you. This is a good sentence to have. Even if the never happens, I will still love you. The place I had to get to is even if the baby never comes, I will still love you. Us people, I had to get to that place. So what is the thing that you're basically holding out on God until he does what you want? What is that thing? You need to fill in that blank and say, even if God never does that, even if he never takes my pain, even if I never, you know, have enough money, even if I, whatever your blank is, I will still love you. Are we there as a community? If not, this is what you want to pray, that God will give you that, because without it, he can't move you forward, and you can't move forward. So, why it means across time and space, the whole world, it reaches the whole world and beyond. That's how big his love is. That's big. And then, how long? It is from eternity past to eternity present. Can you even imagine that? All the way back from before the beginning. I mean, right there, my mind. <laughs> not a map. I mean, that infinity symbol was always confusing to me. A map. To in eternity future. That's how long it is. It doesn't end. There's nothing you can do to make it happen. I mean, religious people try to be... Uh, good enough to be loved, but that's not God's love. It just doesn't end. It is as high as Jesus is seated in the heavenly realms with, with God. We already said that. And it's high enough to lift us there. It's high enough to lift us above every enemy that you can imagine. It's that high. And it's as deep as Calvary. The, depth, the, the distance from heaven to death on the cross that's how deep it is. Deep enough to rescue us from sin, hell, and the grip of Satan. That's how deep it is. It is so, so big. And it is so important that we understand that. We can only know this love when we know Jesus is our Lord and Savior. So if you haven't accepted Jesus, if you, if you want all this, if you want to be out of discouragement, and, and not doubt um, all the time and be able to live through trouble and be filled. You need Jesus. And it's a relationship with a loving God who loves you more than life itself. And it's just saying, I can't do it on my own. I am a sinner. I have done things that I'm not proud of. I ask for forgiveness. I invite you to come into my heart and mind, uh, Jesus, because I believe that you are the Son of God. If that's you, I'm going to interrupt where we're going for a minute because I want you to be able to really understand this with Jesus on board. So Lord, if that's you, pray with me. I confess that I'm a sinner. I ask you for your forgiveness. I believe that you, Jesus, are the Son of God who died for all my sins on the cross. I invite you to come into my heart and life to be my Lord and Savior forever, to start this relationship, this journey to fulfillment and enlightenment and strengthening and completion. Thank you in Jesus' name. If that's you, please um, contact us and let us know because we want to resource you and, and answer any questions you may have. But to know Jesus, you need to love 
like this and know this love in your heart and in your heart, in your heart in the Bible means mind, will, and emotions. To know it there. You cannot know this rationally. This love of God makes no sense in your mind. This love of God is not an information piece. This love of God can only be experienced through living it out. And we have to know it because what is the greatest commandment? To love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength. If you don't know this love, you can't love Him. Who's going to love a God that doesn't love you? That you don't know. And if you don't believe that God loves you, you're also not going to love others. It's impossible. We need God's love for that. Knowing that God loves us is the most important thing because without it, you're just, it's just religious duty. Showing up to church is just a religious duty. Reading the Bible is just a religious duty. Praying is just a religious duty. Serving is just a religious duty. It doesn't get you life. It doesn't get you hope. It doesn't get you anything. Christ died for us, and when we say yes to him, it should start a love affair. He wants us to be in love with him with his everlasting love. That's how we know, not in our head, but in our experience. And we have to live that out. If we don't love, or if we don't know that we're loved, we won't trust God. Anybody struggling with, not, with trusting God? You might explore whether you really believe that you're loved by him. You won't love him. You won't obey God. Hey, if you're not sure that he's a loving God, and you think that maybe he's a bit, you know, narcissistic or vitriolic, you're going to obey him? No, you're going to be scared to obey him because you never know what he's going to do. But that's not our God. If you don't believe that he loves you, you won't serve him. You won't follow. You won't enjoy him. How can you enjoy someone that you don't believe loves you? You won't suffer for him. You're going to stay clear of trouble. And you won't worship him. It is the most important thing we need to do. Verse 19 then says that you may experience the love of Christ, though it's too great to understand fully. Here's the paradox. I want you to experience it, but you won't ever understand it. I want you to know it, but it's not knowable. How crazy is that? But it is the truth. He invites us to that. And then you will be made complete with all the fullness of life and power that comes from God. It says in the other translation that you can be filled with all the fullness of God. Well, we can't be filled with God. We can't become God. Thank heaven because it would be really conscious if there was a bunch of God sitting here and, or I'd be God, but be crazy. No. It is according to who we are that we would be filled to capacity with God's wisdom and knowledge and love. God is full. He filled Christ, and Christ is in us. So to be filled with the fullness of God is to reach maturity. When you start out with Jesus, you're just over the line, right? But then if you keep growing, which means saying yes to Jesus every step of the way, then you will grow into maturity. But what does it take to get to maturity? Yes, and what happens when you say yes? Trouble, trials, difficulties. And so what do a lot of people do? Churches are filled with people who said yes to Jesus, started walking when it was still easy, and then it got hard. And if we're not 100% convinced that God loves us, we're going to go, oh, maybe not that much. <laughs> or I'm out. I'm going to go do something else. I still believe, and I'll make it right before I get to heaven, uh, before I die. But, as if you know when that's going to be. Anyway, but if you persist through that trouble, because you know God loves you, right? You guys know the story with Harry saying it was the addiction journey. Super, super difficult. And I knew that God loves, loved me. I didn't like the process. But what he gave me so much more than what it took to go through it. But it was super hard. It was a choice. And then you're on the other side, and you're like, oh, there's more. I don't know about 
about you, but I want all that God has for me. All that God has for me. I want all the peace and all the joy and all the hope and all the love that I want. I want to have patience, but, and I want to be gentle and kind, and I, I would like to have self-control, spirit control. I want all that Jesus has for me. I want all that the Holy Spirit has for me. I'm that person. Now, I'm like that in life anyway. I remember the first time, the only time I rode in an ambulance. I thought it was super cool because I got to experience it. I was just bummed that it didn't have my contact lenses in because I couldn't see all the edges. But, you know, but how much more do, should we want to experience all that God has? But when you say yes to that, it does come with, oops, because he, what does he have to do to give us all that we want from him? What needs to go? A bit of ourselves. How does that happen? We just kind of go, oh, sure, you know, it's a wrestling match. We might get punched a couple of times. It's hard. But what is the, what is the alternative? Do you want to live as a pauper? Do you want to be Jesus' light? Do you want to do like Jesus' light? Do you want to just have a hint of the Spirit? Or do you want all the riches? Do you want all the love? Because the more you grow, the more you can experience his love. His love doesn't change. Your experience of his love changes when you step into the yes. So, we need the Spirit's filling daily. We need his help daily. Minute by minute, second by second, really. That's how we can stay not discouraged. And then we need to ask ourselves, does Jesus have access to every room of our house? Because if he doesn't, we can't experience all his love. Because there's, you know, no entry signs on different places. Because it's messy. Or we're hiding a sin that we don't want to give up. You know, but it's hurting us. And since God loves us more than we can imagine, he wants you to know it. And so that means saying yes to God. We pray for wisdom, direction, whatever, for God's gifts. And then the first question is, what? Or the first statement is, what? What do you want me to do? The next question may be, why? And then how? Do you know what the first word needs to be out of your mouth? Yes. yes. The, the rest will take care of itself. Yes. God says, come. Yes. Oi. Okay. <laughs> it's all you. With you, I can do this. Yes. Okay, this is different than I thought. Okay, Holy Spirit, fill me, help me. Can't do it alone. Yes, and keep growing. And that's how you get all the fullness of God. So here's the deal. If we're going to just pray one prayer for ourselves or for our community, this is it. Ready? Oh, Lord, may we know how much you love us. Oh, Lord, may we know how much you love us. Because when we do, if you really know how much God loves you, you will be radical. You'll be ruined. No good. <laughs> You'll be no good for everyday living. You'll just be good for, for being with God. It's a good thing. Lord, we thank you that you are committed, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, to give us all that we need you know that we're discouraged. You know that we get scared, question, doubt, feel like there's trouble all around and feel depleted, but we don't have to be there, even though our circumstances don't change. We don't have to figure it out. We don't have to solve it. We just have to lean into you. Oh, Lord, help us to know how much you love us. Strengthen us through the power of your Holy Spirit. Help us to know how wide and long and deep and high your love is for us. And help us to grow in our knowledge and relationship with you so that we may be filled to all the fullness and become all that you've designed us to be. God, I pray that all of us would become experienced junkies about our relationship with you, that we would say yes, yes, God, yes, and pay the price, whatever it is, so that we can become all that you've designed us to be. 
And I thank you and praise you.